farm-related harm is a global problem, but it is particularly high in the US, which remains the largest market for civilian-owned firearms globally. While many high-income countries have banned or highly regulate gun ownership, the US remains an outlier, both in terms of policy and levels of personal ownership. In 2019, over 39,000 gun deaths were reported in the US, and the latest figures suggest that firearms are now the leading cause of death for children and young adults in the US, surpassing road traffic accidents. There is a strong evidence base on the links between firearm availability and firearm-related harm, and firearm ownership is associated with an increased risk of gun-related death at home. Firearm violence is therefore a serious public health issue in the US and continues to put lives at risk, and it is the young and members of deprived and marginalised communities that are at the greatest risk of harm. However, the activities of the firearms industry and its associated groups who together manufacture, sell and promote firearms and defend the business interests of the industry have received little scrutiny from a public health perspective. This is important as the firearm industry and its affiliated groups represent what is called a commercial determinant of health, a term that captures the ways that the private sector shapes people's health and the conditions that determine their health through the products they make and sell and the practices they use to defend their business interests, sometimes to the detriment of public health and the environment. Paying close attention to how harmful commercial products and practices can undermine people's health and rights has been very important for identifying the types of policies needed to address the harms associated with industries like the tobacco, alcohol, fossil fuel, infant formula and pharmaceutical industries, for example. If we only focus on people and the choices they make, we ignore the powerful commercial forces that influence the choices that are available to people and the environments in which those choices are made. Commercial forces can influence what information is available to people and in what form, the types of protections that are in place to keep people safe, and what the public and policy makers understand about an issue and its causes and therefore what needs to be done about it. More needs to be understood about how the firearm industry and the groups it funds undermine public health through not just the products they promote but also the types of problem definitions and policy solutions to firearm harms they advocate. A recent study therefore aimed to contribute to understanding the firearms industry from a commercial determinants of health perspective by exploring the framing strategies adopted by the firearm industry and associated groups. The researchers analysed publicly available data produced by the firearm industry and groups who receive funding from the industry and promote its interests. The study specifically aimed to identify 1 how these groups frame the issue of firearm ownership, who is responsible for firearm harms and what is needed to keep people safe, and two, how they frame the evidence documenting the association between access to firearms and harm. The findings reveal how the framings of the firearms industry and its associated groups are concerning from a public health perspective. They help to place the burden of responsibility onto the public deflecting from the role of the industry and the lack of robust policy measures as drivers of harm, to cast firearm ownership as the answer to personal and public safety and certain social inequalities, while disputing the evidence that demonstrates the association between firearms access, violence, injury and death, and question the effectiveness of certain policies unfavourable to the industry. The framing strategies define the problem as people's mental ill health and criminal behaviours and serve to associate gun ownership with the American identity and predict a dystopian version of the future if further firearm regulations were adopted in the US. These framings resemble those of other harmful industries such as the tobacco industry, who previously adopted narratives about dystopian futures that would unfold in the event public health measures like plain packaging were adopted by governments, 
and the way that the fossil fuel industry spread doubt about the evidence of the harms associated with fossil fuels and its more recent efforts to shift responsibility for those harms onto the actions and demands of the public. The framings identified in this study are concerning as they are polluting public discourse at a time when public debate free of conflicts of interest is desperately needed to save lives. Appeals to fear and the need for protection are particularly notable. These kind of messages can have wider effects on how people perceive public services, the actions of others, the state of society and their own level of safety with far-reaching implications beyond their purchasing behaviours. Public health and advocacy groups can use the findings of the study to help build counter-narratives to these framings, to empower the public to understand the evidence base and see the parallels between the activities of the firearm industry and the ways that other harmful industries try to protect their interests over those of the public by adopting particular framing strategies.